In this video, I discuss the answer to the question, what are the major, minor, and middle terms of the categorical syllogism? First, a little review. Recall that the categorical syllogism is an argument consisting of three categorical propositions. Here are some examples. Pause for a moment, if you like, to review these examples. They've appeared in other videos, such as the video entitled, What is a Categorical Syllogism? Now let's focus on the elements of the categorical syllogism. We've got the major, the minor, and the middle terms. First, the major term. The major term is the predicate of the conclusion. So you find the conclusion and you look for the predicate, the grammatical predicate. Another way to put it is you look for the predicate term. In this case, the conclusion, all cows are animals, has the predicate term animals. That's the major term. The minor term is the subject of the conclusion. In this case, the subject class cows, or the grammatical subject cows, is the minor term in the argument. Finally, the middle term. The middle term appears once in each premise and does not appear in the conclusion. In our example, mammals is the middle term. Now, notice that the major minor and middle terms can appear in different grammatical positions in their respective premises. Once we know what our major and minor terms are in a given argument, we're able to put our argument in standard form. In other words, we're able to reorganize our argument if we need to so that it reflects the standard form of the categorical syllogism. For more on this concept, that is for more on standard form for the categorical syllogism, please see the video, What is the Standard Form for a Categorical Syllogism? First we have the major premise. That contains the major term, which is the predicate of the conclusion. Next, in the order of appearance, we have the minor premise. That contains the minor term, which is the subject of the conclusion, and then we have the conclusion itself. Remember, in standard form, for any argument, but also for the categorical syllogism, we arrange the argument in such a way that each premise is written out one on top of the other, and typically a line is drawn to demarcate the conclusion from the premises. So let's look at the original argument, all cows are mammals, all mammals are animals, so all cows are animals, and we can reorganize the argument so that it reflects standard form for the categorical syllogism. So we've got the elements in order in terms of a sequence one on top of the other, but for standard form, we want to make sure that the premise that contains the major term is first, the premise that contains the minor term is second, and then we have the conclusion. One reminder and final note. The reminder is this. The major term and minor term are respectively represented by the capital letter P and S. The middle term is represented by the capital letter M. These are the standard symbols for, again respectively, the major, the minor, and the middle terms whenever you're dealing with a categorical syllogism. 